Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Mark Broom filling in for E.G. Yoon. Before we get started, let's take a quick check on today's highlights. Korea shipments to China for the first time have entered double digits in terms of import market share. In what areas did Korean companies outperform others? We'll break down the numbers. Is it a smart strategy or a cheap way into the market? Me Too products are flooding store shelves, dampening the outlook for many producers rolling out creative goods. For the first time ever, Korea's outbound shipments to China have accounted for more than 10% of China's import market over a six-month period. This comes despite Korea's exports falling in general. Kwon Suha has the details. The proportion of Korean imports in China in the first half of the year has risen by one percentage point from the same period last year to 10.7 percent, reaching a double-digit figure for the first time ever. The proportion of Korean imports has been on a steady rise and is also widening its gap on Japanese imports in China since Korea supplanted Japan at the number one spot in 2013. This is good news as Korea's exports haven't been doing well this entire year due to weak global demand, with outbound shipments to China no exception. In fact, exports to China fell more than 7 percent in the first half of this year. But considering China imported more than 19 percent less on year during the same period, the situation may not be as serious compared to other exporters to China. Although China has shifted from an export and investment focused growth strategy towards one focusing on the domestic market, it looks like Korean products still maintain high competitiveness. An example of that competitiveness can be seen in Korea's top export to China. Memory semiconductors saw an increase in outbound shipments by almost 17 percent in the January to June period from last year. The consumption market is also on the rise, with Korean cosmetics, baby and hygiene products in demand. But some experts attribute Korea's market share of Chinese imports to the deteriorating relations between China and Japan in recent years, adding that the risks of continuous slowing demand will not abate in the short term. Kwon Soa, Business Daily. There have been signs of improvement in the domestic economy based on recent business figures, raising hopes the country has finally recovered from the impact of the recent MERS outbreak. But looking at the sectors that have posted growth, experts say it's far too early to heave a sigh of relief. Shin Se-min reports. Korea's industrial output in July continued on its expansionary track for two straight months, growing half a percent on the back of a rebound in the country's service sector, slowly recovering from the fallout of the MERS outbreak. Statistics Korea said Monday that the service sector picked up 1.7 percent in July from the previous month. This is mainly due to greater domestic sales that grew nearly 2 percent on month, as well as a 7 percent increase in sales at local eateries and lodging establishments. But in the mining, manufacturing and electricity industries, production dropped by half a percent just a month after figures crawled up in June after three straight months of negative growth from March. Continually low output in the mining and manufacturing sectors reflects poor exports, a detrimental factor for Korea's export-reliant economy. Worries about manufacturing industries are also evident in other figures. In a report by the Bank of Korea, manufacturers had a pessimistic outlook for business conditions in August due to slowing exports. The central bank said that its business survey index for August fell to 68, down two points from July. A reading below 100 indicates that pessimists outnumber optimists. The central bank says that although businesses are recovering from the aftermath of the MERS outbreak, external economic conditions from China's slowing growth and reduced working days from the summer holidays have dampened business sentiment. And experts say that with the global economy expected to face low oil and commodity prices for the time being, Korea's manufacturers will have to weather through some rough times to come. Shin Se-min, Business Daily. 
Five major business lobby groups, including Korea Employers Federation, are calling for flexibility and fairness as the government, management and union leaders are due to return to negotiations over a series of labor reform measures. Last week, the Federation of Korean Trade Unions had agreed to resume the three-way talks, breaking a months-long deadlock. In an emergency press conference on Monday, the business group said rigid labor rules must be eased to enable companies to create new jobs for young workers, citing the three-fold wage difference between entry-level and retirement age employees. They said the system must be revised to reward performance over seniority. They also urged labor groups to back efforts on reforming the current wage structure. Samsung Group will officially launch its newly merged company, Samsung C&T, on Tuesday. The new entity is comprised of the former Samsung C&T and Chael Industries and is targeting over 50 billion U.S. dollars in sales and pre-tax profits of $3.4 billion by the year 2020. The company is also seeking to expand and strengthen its presence in the bio-industry sector as well as secure a place at the top in uh, global fashion and leisure. Shareholders of both Samsung Group affiliates approved the measure last month to facilitate the leadership succession from the group's ailing chairman, Igon Yi, to his son, Lee Jae-yong. After the official launch on September 1st, the company plans to hold a board meeting on Wednesday to elect its new chair. Koreans' credit card spending overseas hit a record high during the first half of this year. According to the Bank of Korea on Monday, the amount of Koreans overseas credit card spending during the first six months of the year reached a daily average of 24.2 million US dollars. The figure represents a jump of over 21 percent from the same period last year. Officials attributed the sharp rise to a tax law revision last year that increased personal tax allowances for Korean travelers making purchases overseas. In contrast, domestic credit card spending increased by just 5.4 percent. Now, the housing market in the first half of this year saw strong growth as homeowners flocked to take advantage of the country's low interest rate. But now, builders are faced with an oversupply of homes and it's led to new ways of luring prospective buyers. Uh, Lee Ju Young has more. Outside of this model house, performers are putting on a show to draw more people. Inside, visitors are learning how to decorate their homes with flowers. I really like how I can learn about flowers and how to decorate my home, which will have a terrace. These are all part of marketing strategies put forward by construction firms like GSCNC to appeal to prospective home buyers as the number of unsold units have ticked up in recent months. We've prepared many events that people can enjoy inside the show house and thousands of customers have expressed a lot of interest by signing up ahead of time. Another construction firm has organized an event where future homebuyers can experience future facilities that will be available once they move into their new apartment complex. We thought it would be effective to let people experience the 750-meter pedestrian mall that will open up inside the compound so they can get a better idea of what kind of characteristics it will have. According to the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport, 34,068 homes across the nation were left unsold in June, up around 20 percent from May. The ministry says this sharp rise is due to the oversupply of homes after the industry saw a boom earlier in the year, along with recent regulations put in place to curb borrowing by individuals with bad credits. And with more houses expected to be released for sale this year, experts say the real estate market will have a hard time pairing up the units with home buyers unless construction firms limit their supply and adjust their prices. Lee Jiang, Business Daily. Now, copycat products can be found in almost every industry, whether it be foods, drinks, clothing, and the list can go on and on. Now, while it may induce competition and lead to better products, companies can sometimes get mired in ugly legal battles. For more on this topic, our Kim Min-ji joins us in the studio today.
Hi, Mark. I'm sure you've probably tasted the recent honey butter chips that has created a boom in the country. Yes, uh, that's the point, really. I tried one brand, but I wasn't entirely sure because there were so many on the shelves at that point whether I was trying the original or not. Yes, it's most hard to find the original right now because they're out of stock. Now, so these are so, uh, so-called Me Too products, and for those who are unfamiliar with the term, Me Too goods refer to those which are just like their competitors. There are hardly any differences, meaning that it ignites intense competition and takes away market share of the leading company. Now, to see how prevalent this tactic is and how it's also becoming an issue across borders, let's take a look at this next report. Is it benchmarking or is it copying? Recently, a Japanese company won a lawsuit against a Korean confectionery firm after the Seoul-based business was found guilty of ripping off the packaging design for its premium chocolate biscuits. The court said the Korean product may have had an adverse effect on the Japanese company's business as they operate in the same industry. But this is not the first case. A handful of popular snacks sold in Korea have already been accused of being imitations of Japanese products. If this isn't bad enough, China has come under scrutiny for allegedly copying Korean franchises from head to toe. A replica of a Korean dessert cafe is gaining popularity, offering a similar menu with even napkins looking the same, but it has no licensing deal with the original brand. Chicken joints, bakeries, all with slight changes in the names can be widely seen across China. The local market in Korea is no exception. The popularity of honey butter flavored chips has led to a deluge of similar goods on store shelves. The Me Too boom is seen in Korean spirits as well with liquor companies all trying to capitalize on the popularity of fruit flavored alcohol. Go one step further and you can see the strategy employed in cosmetics and clothing as well. With the trend trickling into all areas of the market, it has made it hard for the average consumer to distinguish which products are actually the originals. So, what do consumers think? It's good for the consumer because they have more options to choose from. Also, products that come out after the original tend to be better. Because there are so many similar products, it's hard to decide which one to buy when I don't have much information about them. Companies should come up with more unique products of their own. I think Me Too products are necessary to some extent, so that one company can't maximize on profits and market share. Me Too marketing has become a favorite business tool among companies as it saves them the time spent on research and development and they too can reap profits from widely popular goods. But can anything be done to stop it? Many companies have been mired in lengthy legal battles, but it's not always the original producer that comes out the winner, meaning it often ends up being a waste of time. Even if a product uses the same ingredient, the amount used can make things completely different. Also, if another ingredient has been added, it's hard to rule that a company has copied the original. Although it can be a useful business tactic, experts warn companies against jumping onto the Me Too train too often, as it can hurt the image of the brand if people start to see the company as always being a market follower. Well, Minji, it must be really discouraging for the original producers. It makes you, you wonder, really, why they go all to all that effort if it's just going to be taken advantage of. Yes, there has been endless lawsuits in almost every industry, from something basic as chewing gum to even um, unique as bamboo soothing cream. Now, the legal battles usually take place because the Me Too products actually sell better than the original. Now, and it directly eats into the company's profits. Now, it's hard to determine how much costs are incurred or how much losses are incurred, but obviously they end up giving up their market share. And the twist here is that oftentimes the Me Too goods are actually, uh, they do better because they had the time to make up for the shortcomings of the original and that's why they're able to take over the existing goods. So I imagine lots of big companies are going head to head but is there a kind of plus side to this that it could potentially lead to further market expansion? 
Um, looking at it on a broader economic terms, that's true. But there is sometimes the uh, reverse case when small and medium size come up with the product and big companies jump in to create their Me Too products. And because, of the, because they lack brand awareness, um, large corporations sometimes are mistakenly thought as being the original producer. Yeah, it's easy to, to tell by looking at the, the products you have in front of you. And is there anything that can be done to prevent future cases are, or are there specific strategies that market uh, leaders can adopt? Well, the markets in general are pretty saturated, so experts say it's quite an inevitable not to use these tactics. But they do agree that Me Too marketing should be avoided at all extents. And experts say that companies should come up with a second and third hit product, so when rivals release a new product, they can release their next series. And they also advise the companies secure enough supplies because, in many cases, demand outnumbers supply, so consumers are forced to turn to alternative goods. So a lot of it has to do with being able to produce a multiple number of good ideas and selling those to consumers and creating an image of being the market leader, really. That's right. Well, thank you very much, Minji, for your report, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Well, that does it for this edition of Business Daily. Thank you ever so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.